Right, thank you very much. Um, just before we uh, move on to the, the, the committee structure, I um, should say to the, uh, to the council that we've um, released the decisions I, I spoke of earlier on around the re rebuild and repair of council facilities um, and the amount that I was looking for earlier on um, in my comments was that uh, we've announced a commitment to over $40 million to fast track the repair and rebuild of priority community and heritage facilities across the city and Banks Peninsula. Um, and uh, the, the totals in, in terms of an explicit number are $29,087,059 for the repair and rebuild of community facilities and a further $11,703,596 for heritage facilities. And I know that that's um, certainly been received uh, very well. It's a shame that I, I didn't realise that it, it was going to be... Um, released before earlier, otherwise I would have done that while everyone was still here because I think uh, people would have been um, very pleased with the, with the facilities that have been announced. Um, there are a number obviously um, in this uh, area, there's work to be done on the um, library and the pier terminus in, in New Brighton. Uh, there's uh, work to be done in Clear, Clear Park, there's work to be done um, in Cuthbert's Green, uh, there's work to be done uh, in a number of different parts of things. But one of the things that I did want to announce, and it, it sort of arose out of the discussion that we had on the weekend, but it was confirmed by council before the weekend, um, is, is that we wanted to show um, the people of New Brighton that the council is absolutely committed to the project, uh, the legacy project, and that we wanted to, um, and it's not all of the money that will be spent on the legacy project because we have uh, got an expression of interest out to gain uh, some, you know, g gain uh, an, an understanding of, uh, of what people would like to contribute to that and some of the ideas that people will have. But we have set aside, uh, within our borrowing facility, I, um, I hasten to add, uh, $5 million for the New Brighton Legacy Project so that it is an absolute commitment of the Christchurch City Council that we are going to leave a legacy for New Brighton um, as a result of the experience that we've had. And I'm really pleased that I can announce this on the 4th of September. And I wish everyone was here to give a round of applause. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Right, so now we'll move on to the um, committee, um, the, the report on the committees, and uh, I've, I've added in a couple of changes to um, some of the uh, committee membership uh, through the resolution, and I will move the resolution, and Phil Clearwater will second the resolution. Um, and I'll just identify that there are a couple of um, changes that have been uh, quite um, explicitly made uh, in relation to the timetable. So, uh, the, I mean, the, 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 this, this um, decision, if, we, if this carried today, will go to the next council meeting, which will formally um, appoint the chairs uh, and, uh, and, and the committee members that we've identified. Not all the committee members have been as, uh, identified at this stage, um, and certainly for some of the working groups different uh, councillors have indicated an intention to get involved with, 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 with ones but not the others and so we're, we're working through those issues and I, and I think in a very constructive way. Um, and then once the chairs are actually officially appointed for both the committees and the uh, subcommittees, uh, then we can develop terms of reference uh, to sign off for the council meeting for the 25th of September. So by the by the 1st of October, we will have in place uh, a new committee structure that I think will serve the city well. As I said, it absolutely ties in with the Resilient Cities uh, framework, but it also en enables council, um, council laws to spend a lot more time with their communities um, around individual projects, but also um, listening and working with those communities and engaging with them in a much more upfront way. So I, I'm feeling um, that we've, we've got things um, working pretty well, and we're asking the Chief Executive to look at a 
proposed timetable and schedule of meetings, which I think people will find a lot more um, strategic than what we've been doing um, up until now. So um, thanks very much for all of the work that's been done on that. In terms of the change of membership, the only the significant change is to uh, change Councillor Johansson from uh, the um, from the infrastructure committee through to the communities committee, and um, to add him as a member of the strategy and finance committee. Um, the housing subcommittee will ask for a specific report back on whether it's more appropriately framed as a task force. Um, and I think that that might give it the impetus that it needs in terms of the priority that this council has placed on housing. So that's something that we'll work through as well. Um, but I thank everyone for the significant amount of um, time and effort that they've put into this um, proposal. And um, are there any questions? And, and if not, I'll open it up for discussion. No questions, I'll open it up for discussion. Phil? Well, I'm happy to make some comments. I think altogether, this, the, the whole new shape of the committees will, uh, as Leanne said, allow us as a council to be more strategic and have a clear direction and focus. And, and I think also, though, the new structure must um, allow us to continue to work collaboratively. Um, and, and also, I, I believe, it utilises the skills and knowledge that people have. And I think that in terms of the different roles, I know there's been some changes, but I've got no doubt that every councillor here has, um, is a leader, and there are lots of areas in which all of us can lead out on. There's, lots, there's, so, there's so much to do, as I guess we've, we have been saying. So, um, and I know that the, the, the whole thing um, needs to be added to by way of very clear terms of reference for each committee, and that's yet to come, and the same with the delegations uh, for, for, each, for each committee too. And all of the, those other parts are, are equally important for us to attend to at, at our next meeting. Yeah, uh, Pauline and then Ali. Thank you, yeah, um, I'm just really got a question about the um, timetable for the meetings. Yeah, so. Um, I'm not happy with the, um, the two meetings being on, on one day. I envisage these meetings will possibly go at least into the other half of each day. And I think it should still be possible for councillors to attend other meetings too if they wanted to. So I'd be supportive of the um, infrastructure, transport, environment being separated on a separate day from housing and economic development. Yeah, uh, look, the council. So what, what, we're, what we're suggesting is, is that the chief executive come back with a report on the. Um, on the proposal. I don't think that that is actually included in the resolution. So we're not actually passing a resolution that supports um, the particular timetable that we have there. Um, but I will, you know, just in, in response to that, um, I'm trying to reduce the number of meetings that councillors go to um, so that they can focus on the, you know, particular areas that they're involved in. Um, it doesn't, you know, I mean, if, 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 there, if there is a preference for one over the other, then I don't mind, you know, that we work that through, but I don't want two people left on one committee and everyone else on the other. Um, no, no, I was just saying the timing of the meetings, not who's on Yeah, no, no, yes. I know that, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make it so that people don't have to have meetings every day of the week. I'm trying to reduce the number of meetings I and that. taking it off a Thursday, um, which is the, which is the alternative, does actually um, create another day that people have to be in the council building rather than focused on the. Well, I know, so that could well be a trade-off, but it's probably worth a further discussion. Yeah, but it, but it's going to be a, a point of discussion because we've asked the chief executive to come back with a timetable. Yep. So we're not signing off on the timetable that's proposed. We've asked the chief executive to do some more work on that. Cool. And we will do, uh, the CEO said that she will develop that in consultation with the chairs and committee members. Okay. Great. Good. Um, Ellie. Thank you. No, I just wanted to endorse what you said about getting into the communities, and I might have indicated that by my impromptu whoop. But um, I just think that when we started, when we were elected, something that was made very clear was opening up the council building and the council as a as a 
as a business, as an operation, to get you know bring people into the building as well. Well, it's also just as important that we are back out in our wards and meeting with people face to face. I know that a lot of people are sick to death of dealing with people on the phones, and there's nothing better than actually sitting down and speaking to someone face to face. So, bring that on soon. Be great. Yeah, and it's also on the issues as well, not yeah. just in your wards. So right across the community, and you know that. Um, this um, proposal has the ability for us to set up ad hoc committees and subcommittees or other subordinate decision making bodies as well and it may be that there are issues that come up you know, I'm, you know I know that I've talked to you about the EQC and insurance stuff and maybe that's something that we want to be driving um, in a different way and you'd want to take a leadership role in that so you know that's the sort of thing that we can do in a much more um, focus way rather than establishing something that's going to create a mechanism that, that sort of drives drives on. Um, and there, there are a couple of things that I just want, well, one in particular that I just wanted to highlight because, um, and I, I will probably do this more when it comes to the, to the council itself, um, but this... Um, this Mayoral Quality Regulation Review Task Force. When I was Minister of Commerce, um, I undertook a quality regulation review, and it's about looking, not, not internally within the council, but it is actually about going out to business and talking to them about what are the regulatory barriers that are stopping um, business growth, and I see that as a really important committee. So not just working with councillors, but actually staff as well. And I've already spoken to the chief executive about this. Um, there is a, um, a, a quality improvement uh, a process within the council itself, and this will support the review. And I think that we're going to make some pretty important changes to the way we operate as a council um, by getting to the heart of what's holding um, business back. So I, I just think that there are a number of these um, proposals in here. So that's that's my um, special project. The other one that's special for me is, of course, the. Um, the whole representation review because it's a whole new way of going out and, and, and Yanni's going to be leading that for the, for the council as well. And I just, I just think that um, we're, we're on the cusp of uh, seeing a whole new way of decision making in the city and a whole new way of defining democracy. So it's not just a vote every three years, it's actually something meaningful that people can um, actively engage in as citizens of the city and not and, and residents and not just, um, you know, a, 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 yeah. Like today, I felt like people were really engaged in the decision that we ultimately made, but we know that it was a decision made by the community. So I'm, I'm feeling extremely positive about where we go. 4th of September was always going to be a difficult day, certainly for me and others that experienced um, what we experienced back then and everything since. But um, I think what's helping me get through today is just this incredible sense of the opportunity that lies ahead. Glenn. Thank you, and, and I, um, it sounds a cliche to say I support that, but it's something Yanni picked up on as well before. I like this way of engaging here just by virtue of being here, mm. and I, I've always liked that kind of um, Australian government model of community cabinet, mm. and I would like this if we could kind of, you know, we're local government, but um, actually go around the wards. I don't know how frequently, but also um, Rapaki, the marae there as well. I think that's an agreement that's been long-standing, but we haven't done. So if we could look at that, I think it'd be yep. great. I think that's good. All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much, and I'll um, declare the meeting closed. Thank you.